Did you know that there are seven species of coral trout found throughout the world and five of those are found in Australia? Coral trout are arguably one of the most sought after species for a spearfisher in Australia. This is mainly due to the fact that they are relatively easy to spear, aside from some of the species that are a little bit more tricky, but we'll get to that later. The other reason is that they can be found in very shallow water. I've seen them in water that you could pretty much stand up in less than two meters at times. On top of all this, they are considered by many to be the best eating fish in the world. Coral trout begin their lives as females and then they permanently transition into a male at around that three to seven year age. This is why you never find really large coral trout full of roe. They are always going to be males. They can be found in many parts of Australia, as well as Indonesia, the Pacific Islands, Japan in the north, all the way to the Red Sea and Eastern Africa, such as Madagascar, Mauritius, Seychelles. Coral trout get their name from when colonists arrived and named them after species they would find back in their home waters. In this case, it was named after the freshwater rainbow trout, which has similar blue spots on the top half of its body. These trout, however, were found on coral reefs, hence coral trout. Quite an imaginative bunch back in the 1800s. In other parts of the world, they are known as coral groupers or just groupers. And in fact, they are related to the Epinephalus genus, which covers all your big cod like Goliath groper, Queensland groper, and the likes of those type of fish. The five species of coral trout that you find in Australia are the Plectropomus lepidus, which is the common coral trout, Plectropomus maculatus, which is the bar cheek trout, Plectropomus lavis, the blue spotted trout, Plectropomus aerialatus, which is the passion fruit trout, and Plectropomus ogliacanthus, which is the vermicular trout. Oh my goodness, I've been doing about 15, 16, 17 takes to try and get that out in one go. Yes! The common coral trout, Plectropomus lepidus, is also known as a leopard trout or a strawberry trout. In Western Australia, they are found around the Abrolhos Islands and the northern outer reefs. On the east coast, they are more common all throughout the Great Barrier Reef, but you start getting them consistently from Brisbane North. Although there have been reports of them being shot in Sydney, which is absolutely verified, but it's not understood if these are actually resident fish or they are fish that have been released from live fish markets. The Australian record for this species is a whopping 10.25 kilograms from Bryson Sheehy, which was captured at Moreton Island off Brisbane. Now, you can get these fish on all sorts of terrain. I've seen them on flat coffee rock, I have seen them on full-blown reef, and I've also seen them on rubbly, shaly type areas as well. When you're looking for them on reef systems, the best way to get a good sized coral trout is to look for an isolated bombera or bommie as they're affectionately known in Australia. And if they're full of glass fish like this, little tiny bait fish, coral trout love to eat these things. They won't be far away. This five kilogram fish was taken on the Southern Barrier Reef and it provides quite an easy target because if you go to areas that don't get dived a lot, the trout will often turn, look at you and offer a very easy shot. I presume this next fish had just finished feeding. It was right at the end of the day, the sun was going down, it was quite shallow water, and it was just simply resting in this sand gutter. I swam straight up to it, it didn't move much at all, and presented me with a very easy shot. Not all that bad. The key identifiers for the Plectropomus lepidus are the blue spots found all over the body and the spots are very small and found on all fins except the pectoral fins. The pectoral fins are translucent, meaning you can see through them, and the distinct blue ring around the eye. The next species Plectropomus maculatus is also known as the coastal or bar cheek trout. This is the most common trout that you'll find in Western Australia, all the way from Geraldton up into the Northern Territory, again on the East Coast, Brisbane, North. The Australian record for this species is 9.7 kilograms, shot by Trevor Ketchian, also at Moreton Island. Although the name implies they are a coastal dwelling fish, they can be found 20, 30 kilometers offshore, particularly on wrecks. Once again here you can see this typical coral trout pose where it stands its ground, looks at you, assesses you, and then by that stage it's usually too late. These are actually the only species of coral trout that I've ever shot off wrecks.
They are also the most shallow coral trout that I've ever speared. I think the shallowest I've ever shot one was off Magnetic Island of Townsville in North Queensland and it was probably around three or four meters so you don't have to dive deep for these fish at all. Like most trout, when they're found on coral reef areas, they hang around bommies. And when you do dive on them, they will often give you that straight on look, assess you, find out what you are. And once they start to turn, they're going to burn. So you don't have too long to take a shot. This is the biggest bar cheek trout that I've ever shot. And it was on a coffee rock ledge in about 25 meters of water. As I was diving down, I could see them sitting right off the bottom, half a dozen trout, all good size. I looked around for Red Emperor or Largemouth Nanagai first, decided I couldn't find any of those. So there was one trout, standout fish looking straight at me, and then I took the shot. Don't be fooled by these coral trout. If you give them any slack, they will bury you in the reef very quickly. That's what happened to this one. It took me a few dives to get it out, but it was a beautiful six kilogram fish. The key identifying features for the bar cheek coral trout are the elongated bar-like spots on its face, hence bar cheek trout. They also do not have any spots on their bellies. Their pectoral fins, like the leopard trout, are also translucent. You can see straight through them. These also have a wide variety of colorations from dark brown to orange, but you don't tend to get that really deep crimson color like you do on the leopard trout. The Plectropomus lavis or blue spot coral trout is the largest of the coral trout species found in Australian waters. They grow in excess of 30 kilograms. The Australian record shot by Pat Mullins is 24.75 kilograms from the coral sea. That would have been a beast of a fish. They are found on the outer coral sea reefs all the way down to Brisbane on some of the bunker group areas. You might find them a bit closer on shore, although not as common. In the northern parts of Western Australia, Rolly Shoals, etc., you might find them there. All throughout the Pacific region, all the way to Africa as well, they are quite a widespread coral trout. Juveniles can display a striking yellow and white coloration pattern, which is also known as the Chinese footballer coloration. Once upon a time, these were thought to be separate coral trout species, but through DNA testing, it has been found and accepted worldwide that these are the same species of Plectropomus lavis. The footballer coloration is very easy to see underwater because the yellow is one of the last colors to disappear at depth. In my limited experience with blue spot coral trout, I have found that the bigger ones tend to be quite territorial and don't bolt nearly as much as the smaller, more shy fish. You can see on this trout that I'm diving on here that it's coming towards me and then it rolls a little bit so it can get a better look at me. Then it starts to slowly point its nose into the current and head off. But by this stage, I've closed the gap and it's too late. Nice. Good size. Typically when you spear a blue spot coral trout, you're going to be in extremely clear water. This is due to the fact that you're going to find them in the coral sea mainly, Pacific islands, offshore atolls and the likes of those areas. The water will be very clear and it's easy to underestimate how big these trout look when the bottom looks all the same and you dive down on it, you have no reference and take a long shot like I did on this one. I was very lucky to land this fish and the fact that it was so flat on the bottom and not a lot of reef structure was the only reason I got this fish into the boat. Identifying a blue spot trout from a leopard or a coastal trout is very easy. The first thing you look for is the obvious size of the blue spot trout. They can get much bigger. That's generally the first thing you look for and how they look underwater. They often carry a saddled coloration when they're on the bottom. They lack the blue ring around the eye that the other two species have. They also have spots covering the entire body and sometimes they can elongate as you can see in this fish here. The spots can sometimes even be on their eyeballs. Now the pectoral fin, most people will say that if it's opaque, you can't see through it. It's 100% a blue spot coral trout, but I found some of the trout in Tonga that I shot, you could kind of see through the pectoral fin. So it's not 100% gospel, but it's a pretty good baseline to say that if you can't see through the pectoral fin, it's more than likely a blue spot trout. 
Blue spot coral trout have strong implications with ciguatera poisoning. That's why in Queensland and Australia, they have a maximum size limit of 80 centimeters. Personally, I probably wouldn't eat one in Queensland over about four kilograms, especially if it was from an area in the far north. For those of you that don't know what ciguatera poisoning is, in a nutshell, it is a small organism that grows in and around coral reefs that get eaten by bait fish, then bait fish get eaten by bigger fish, big fish eats little fish, and then it accumulates in the body of the large predatory fish, like a blue spot trout or a barracuda. Then when we eat the fish, it builds up in our body and there's a certain threshold. So you may eat a fish that has ciguatera toxin in it, but you don't display any symptoms until it builds up in your body, then one day, like that, you will be dizzy, diarrhea, nausea, reverse senses, so your hot and cold will be mixed up. So you'll stick your hand under a cold tap and it'll feel like it's on fire. You stick your hand under a hot tap and it'll feel like it's freezing. It's a really nasty thing to get rid of and basically, don't eat large predatory reef fish from areas that are known to contain cigatoxins. In Tonga, there wasn't any issues with cigatera, that's why we were able to shoot some larger sized fish. Plectropomus aerialatus, the square tail or passion fruit coral trout. I have never seen one of these in the water, but I have had a few mates spear them, and by all reports, they are extremely difficult to get close to. Very shy, very wary. They are easily identifiable by their blue spots on the body with a dark margin around the outside, resembling passion fruit seeds. These are a very northern species in Australia, and in West Australia, you're probably going to find them on places like Scott Reef or Ashmore Reef. On the East Coast, they come down a little bit further, and the Australian record actually comes from Cairns off Opal Reef. It was 5.45 kilograms shot by Lyle Squire in 1978. It's a very hard record to beat. Another distinguishing feature of the passion fruit trout is the white margins found on the dorsal, anal, and caudal fins. They are also found throughout the Pacific Islands, and the shots shown here from Tim were shot in the Solomon Islands, and they are also found in the Red Sea. Plectropomus oligocanthus, high fin or vermicular coral trout, is probably the most striking, beautiful coral trout of the lot. Instead of blue spots, they have wavy lines all through them, kind of like a Maori warrior. For this reason alone, they are easily distinguishable from all other coral trout species, and they also have a very high dorsal and anal fin. It's very pointed, very obvious. Just like the previous passion fruit trout, they are a very northern species, although I'm not sure that any have actually been shot off mainland Australia. The Australian record was shot at a place called Ashmore Reef, which is about two thirds of the way from the Northern Territory to Timor. So kind of it's basically more Timor than Australia, but it's still an Australian territory. So it counts as an Australian record. 4.08 kilograms by Adam Smith, the reef legend. Because I've never seen or shot one of these trout, I have to give a massive shout out to Jack Strickland from Back to Basics for providing the footage for this fish. They have an awesome YouTube channel based in North Queensland, which showcases the best of what the Daintree has to offer. Camping, fishing, diving, they have it all up there. I highly suggest you check out their channel and subscribe. The other two species of coral trout in the world are the roving coral trout and the marbled coral trout. The roving coral trout looks like a cross between the vermicular trout and the blue spot coral trout. It has these big, massive blue spots all over it that sometimes elongate along the body horizontally, but it doesn't have the high dorsal and high anal fin that you see on the high fin trout. So easy to identify, plus it grows massive 20, 30 kilograms like the blue spots as well. The marble trout, very easy to identify. It just looks like a typical coral trout without any spots. And it just has blotchy marbling all over it. This is found out through the Red Sea, Zanzibar, East Africa. I have to say a massive thank you to Barrett Harvey from African Spearfishing Diaries for letting me use this footage of the roving coral trout and the marbled coral trout. Be sure to jump over to his channel. There will be a link in the description. The next two trout species aren't actually true coral trout, but they are very similar. That is being the two species of coronation trout. The smaller and rarer of the two species is the white margin coronation trout, easily distinguishable by the white edge on the caudal fin. These are way smaller, way rarer, and you don't often come across them. The other key identifier is the lack of yellow on any of the fins apart from the pectoral fins. The larger and more common of these two species is the yellow edge coronation trout, which grows up to about eight kilograms. These can be found throughout Australia, Indo-Pacific region, Red Sea, East Africa, they get around. 
On the east coast of Australia, the furthest south you consistently get them is from my hometown of Brisbane. I find particularly in the summer months around February with the warm flushes of water that come through there, often 26, 27 degrees, you tend to find a lot of coronation trout out and amongst the reefs. There's been quite a few occasions where I've actually shot two on one day. However, the furthest south I've seen them being shot is Coffs Harbour. I regard coronation trout as a very difficult fish to shoot. When you dive on top of them, often you might get a few seconds before they turn away and dart into the nearest cave. If you try and follow them in that cave, no sooner they went in, they're probably out the back door, off to the next bommy, never to be seen again. If you manage to get to the bottom and they can't get a clear view of you, often they will look at you face on, approach a little bit, and once they see enough of you, they will dart to the side and then try and see a little bit more of you. They keep repeating this process and won't come any closer. They are very crafty and cunning, especially the big ones. Now say you're on the bottom and you can see your coronation trout off in the distance. It's sitting there a little bit off the bottom, staring you down, looking at you like this going, you can't get me, you're too far away. One option that you have, not recommended unless it's an absolute last resort, is the charge down. Sometimes you can close the gap on these fish by swimming hard at them and before they realize how close you are, it's too late and you can put a shot into them. This dive here, I was in Tonga. I was waiting a while on the bottom looking for green jobfish coming over the ledge. There was also some big eye brim off in the distance and they weren't playing the game. I knew this smaller coronation trout was sitting off in the distance a few meters away, just out of range, and I wasn't going to get close enough. It wasn't coming towards me. So I gave it the charge down, put a long shot in and managed to secure a two kilo fish. On the subject of weight, coronation trout weigh like a feather. They are super light compared to the regular coral trout. If you weigh this fish here that I'm holding, if it was a regular coral trout that size, it would be three kilos. That fish was only two kilos. I think it's the big tail or something that makes them look bigger than they actually are. This dive here, I was off Brisbane and I'd seen this particular coronation trout for a few previous dives. I didn't have any luck getting it to come close to me using traditional methods of scratching and throwing sand up, so I decided to dive away from where I thought the fish was going to be, crawl along the bottom a little bit, and then charge it down as a last resort. A few big kicks, I'm in range, and put a shot in. You could easily be mistaken to think that the charge down method is the way to go for a coronation trout, but it's an absolute last resort. I've had far more success on hunting them, outsmiting them around bombies than the charge down method. And this just goes to prove that with a massive fail on my part with a lousy shot. This dive here was on an isolated patch of reef off Brisbane, and I knew that this place holds coronation trout. On the drop down, I look through the surgeon fish and I can see one sitting high off the bottom and I have its attention. It's staring straight at me. As I'm trying to gently swim towards it, I can see that it's looking at me and I get the feeling that it's going to turn. I roll the gun out, put a few big kicks in, it gives the big turn and just as it turns, I pull the trigger. Not the best shot, but I'll take any shot on a coronation trout. Out of all the trout species, even though it's not a true coral trout, I'd have to say coronation are my favorite. I have so many memories of playing cat and mouse with these things off Brisbane. I love the challenge of the hunt when you actually finally get to pull the trigger. I have one distinct memory that will never leave my brain. It was my first big coronation trout off Brisbane. I dived on this fish probably for 45 minutes and I eventually got into a position where it was comfortable with me and I was making a drop straight down on top of it and I remember my heart beating out of my chest because I knew that I was going to get in range with this fish and I pulled the trigger and it was about four and a half kilos, still my biggest coronation trout and I was just elated. It was, it was just one of those days that I'll never forget. It was, it was a really special fish for me. Congratulations if you got this far in the video. I know there was a lot of information there. I didn't really realize how deep the coral trout rabbit hole was going to go until I started doing this video and then realized, yeah, it was pretty deep. 
So if you like this video, you got something out of it, give it a thumbs up, it actually makes a difference. Subscribe if you aren't already, and I'll see you on the next one.